We live in the perfect place to celebrate National Fossil Week. The discoveries in North Dakota help to trace our history back about 90 million years. And there are so many to see for yourself, especially across the central and western parts of the state. So we invited Dr. Clint Boyd and Becky Barnes to North Dakota today. They are paleontologists from the North Dakota Geological Survey Paleontology. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Now I'm going to ask you, uh, either one of you can field this question, but it used to be that we had National Fossil Day, but now that's kind of expanded to an entire week. Tell me what, what led to that change. So the first, the first time National Fossil Day was um, started, I guess, was yeah. celebrated, started, began in 2010. It was, it was a day, and um, there was a lot of positive feedback for National Fossil Day, mm -hmm. but because National Fossil Day sometimes ends up in the middle of the week, maybe you have events that are running into your school year or sure. your school classes. So in order to accommodate that, we just kind of expanded out. A lot of museums have actually expanded out to a fossil week. So you hit Saturday, Sunday, you can get a lot more activities going on. Right. Good. Well, there's lots of opportunity to go check out some fossils across North Dakota. What are some of the must hits on that list of places to go see? Well, of course, the Heritage Center here yeah. in Bismarck, mm -hmm. um, which is where we're based out of. But there's also the Pioneer Trails Regional Museum down in Bowman, which is a great place. Uh, the Badlands Dinosaur Museum in Dickinson is a great place as well. Um, several other small museums. Uh, there's little exhibits like in uh, Watford City in the Long mm -hmm. X Travel Center there. So we um, help set up over 24 exhibits across the state in North Dakota and little places like that. So there's lots of sometimes unexpected places where you can find a nice little fossil exhibit in North Hidden Dakota. Hidden gems, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Hope had touched on it a little bit as far as, you know, this kind of a hot spot, you know, Western North Dakota and, and that region. Is there a better place to be for fossil finding and things like that than in this part of the country in the United States? Well, uh, North Dakota is very unique, uh, in my opinion, because you can go pretty much anywhere in the state right. and it's the right type of rocks to find some type of fossil. Okay. So you don't have like the, the mountain building rocks, what we call igneous rocks, like you get like the Black Hills or the Rocky Mountains. Those don't have fossils in them. We have what are called sedimentary rocks, so rocks Sponder. are deposited with fossils buried in them across the whole state from the Ice Age all the way back to, like you said, about 90 million years ago. Mm -hmm. So there are other states you can go to and find fossils of slightly different ages, but North Dakota is really great because anywhere you go, you can keep your eyes peeled and there could be a fossil there. That's so exciting. Yeah, and it so really cool. is. I think part of it is a little Indiana Jonesy that we get excited <laughs> about digging back into history and paleontology and everything. Do you notice that people get really excited when they come out and interact with the fossils and get to get to learn a little bit more about the state. Oh yeah, people people are excited and it's it's all ages. We have a lot yeah. of people who join us on public fossil digs during the summertime. Uh, a lot of times it's the adults that are attending, sometimes it's the adults who bring their kids along with because they feel that because they're an adult, they're not allowed to like dinosaurs. Uh -huh. And and there was a, a joke going on, on social media a couple of years ago. It's like, when you become an adult, nobody ever asks you what your favorite dinosaur is anymore. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh. It's true, those questions go away. Where did the interest in paleontology come from for you? For me, uh, I used to come out to this area of the country, uh, mostly Montana and South Dakota and North Dakota, in the summers um, for hiking trips and in the falls for hunting trips with my family. And we just randomly stamp stumbled across some fossils while we were out there, uh, picked them up. Uh, took them to a museum, got told they were fossils. We just thought they were regular bones to start sure. with. And from that point, it was like, wait, you mean like you can just be out wandering around randomly and find some of this stuff? Mm -hmm. And that really sparked it for me, and it just kind of increased from there. Mm. So, That's cool. How about you? Uh, <laughs> I grew up in a family that loved um, classical mythology and yeah. fairy tales. So uh, I am the girl that loved monsters, oh, and sure. dinosaurs are my dragons. Yeah. So. How I, get to, I get to work with my monsters. I love that. I mean, I think that's really inspi inspiring for a lot of kids to, to recognize that there could be a whole career path forward in some of the interests that you have. Uh, we want to hear about some of the really cool exhibits that are going on right mm -hmm. now. So the Dino Mummy exhibit is one of them. Tell us about that. So uh, this Saturday, on October 16th, we're going to be reopening the Dakota the Dino Mummy exhibit at the Heritage Center here in Bismarck. 
It's been off display for about three years, and during that time we've taken it downstairs and we've cleaned up whole new areas of the specimen that have never been seen before. It's a magnific magnificent dinosaur, what's called a duck-billed dinosaur, and not just is the skeleton really well preserved, but we have the actual skin and like the fingernails and areas like that. Um, the kind of the centerpiece or one of the centerpieces of the new exhibit is the right arm from the elbow to the hand, absolutely like full skin down. You can see the nails. Oh. It looks like, say you went to the island in Jurassic Park after the T-Rex got done yeah. you know, rampaging around <laughs> and you picked up an arm as a souvenir and brought wow. it back. That's kind of what cool. it seems like. And even as a paleontologist, it's the quality of a fossil that you never really thought you'd ever see. You know, you just think you're going to see the bones and, and this fossil just blows me away. So we're really excited to show that to the public. You know, I can't imagine how rare that is to find something like that. My question right away is who and how is preservation of that done? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's complicated, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, we, used, we used to think that it was uh, these animals would die, they had to be buried very quickly and dry out. And uh, if you come to the Saturday event, you'll, you'll get a sneak peek as far as why that's now maybe not the case. Okay. Interesting. So, so things have, have defi definitely changed with some of the science behind how these fossils get to, to where they're at. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dinosaur does have to die and the skin does have to dry out eventually. And, uh, yeah, you end up with skin. It's fascinating. Okay, so if you don't get enough with just a Saturday event, you can have dinner with the Dakota Dino Mummy, correct? Tell correct. us about that event. So we're going to have a kind of a sneak peek early opening on Thursday evening. It uh, starts at 5.30 at the Heritage Center. Uh, tickets for that event are available on eventbrite.com. And uh, you'll have the opportunity, well, to meet all of us. Uh, we have a third paleontologist as well who will be there. We also have a special guest who's coming in from out of state, uh, Dr. Stephanie Drumheller, who's going to give a great talk on cannibalism in a meat-eating dinosaur called uh, Allosaurus uh, from the <laughs> Jurassic period. And then you'll be what, the first people to see the new Dakota exhibit, and we're even going to allow people to come downstairs and check out the lab. And there's more of Dakota that's still being worked on down in the lab that they'll get to see that the regular general public doesn't get to see. Very you know, it's a, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's so interesting. <laughs> You guys just light up when you talk about these yeah. kind of things, and it's really cool because these are amazing finds and, yeah. and amazing displays. Let me ask you a question now. Some of you may be looking at Becky and go, you look familiar. Well, Becky was here with the Flickertail woodcarvers about two weeks ago. So let me ask you this. You're a paleontologist. You're into the wood carving. Which one gives you more energy and satisfaction as far as, you <laughs> know, getting, chopping things yeah, up or preserving yeah, things? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Putting them together or, or chopping them up? It, it's kind of funny because they both actually intertwine pretty well. Okay. So with the fossils, um, I, I put together a lot of pieces, a lot of little things. Fossils don't come out of the ground looking pretty most of the time. Mm -hmm. They come out in pieces. And so we collect all those pieces and then we glue them or clean them, glue them, and put them back together again. And with the woodworking that I do, I'm actually cutting out little pieces of wood and then gluing those back sure, together again. Sure. So, so they're kind of similar. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I can see it. That's very cool. Fascinating interests that you guys have. We just quickly want to mention there's a free showing of Land Before Time at 2 p.m. in the Russell Reed Auditorium, so there's another opportunity for you to enjoy this National Fossil Week here. And give us some information on where we can find you guys at the Heritage Center. Well, we're in the basement, so it's hard to find okay, us. Okay, so there's one thing for you. But, um, Just listen for the growling sound, right? <laughs> but if anyone has a, something that they find that they think is a fossil, they can come to the Heritage Center, come to the info desk, and ask for us. We'll come up and take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, on all the social media platforms, we're at NDGS Paleo, and they can find us there. Uh, it's really the best way to interact with us. So um, if you've got something you'd like to talk to us about, come and hang out. I love it. Great. Okay, I want to hang out with you guys. Dr. Glenn <laughs> Boyd and Becky Barnes, thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> we appreciate you coming. Thanks. Good luck this weekend. Or the whole week, I should whole say. Week. All right, stay with us. we got much more coming up on North Dakota Today right after this.